Ladies and gentlemen, what is good? In this Elden Ring video, I wanted to share with you my Star Scourge Radon build. It's a nice mix between a heavy warrior melee build and mixing in those gravity spells. I had an absolute blast playing it and I figured you guys would enjoy it too. So without further ado, let's take a peek. So starting off, let's talk a bit about how the class plays. This build is leading into gravity magic and heavy weapons and armor to get as close to Radon himself as we can be. The base of this class stems off the weapon Ash of War from Radon's weapons, which gives off a massive AoE blast, pulling the targets together, and then finishing off with just a larger explosion, which actually in patch 1.09, which dropped today, they actually decreased the time it takes to let go of that final explosion. So it even got better. But when in doubt, I always fall back to this spell due to the pure lethality of it and the ability for it to just clear out packs of mobs when you need it to. The base for the range gameplay would come down to Rock Sling, which synergizes really well with the heavy weapons because not only does Rock Sling provide a decent amount of damage, the main thing that I use it for is the increased poise damage as well. Works amazing while you're trying to poise break your enemies. You know, with these heavy weapons, it happens more often than not. For this build, we're gonna have an intellect strength build and your choice is gonna start to branch out depending on if you're leaning more towards the melee aspect or the range. But for this specific build, I chose to go more heavy into the melee aspect of it. Um, so we'll just run with that for the sake of this video. All right, so starting off with the armor, um, I did wanna role play as much as I can as Radon himself. So of course I chose to go with his armor. I ended up swapping the helmet to the Landell Knight Helm um, just because it looks good, but you could swap this stuff around and just make it kind of fit your endurance we'll talk a bit more about how much points i put in endurance later on in the video but i definitely wanted to stick more into that heavy armor heavy weapon type of look also the heavy armor works really well with this build uh, due to the fact that when you try to use the ash of war from this weapon star callers cry you're definitely going to end up taking some hits so you're going to want to have some poise yourself just so you could take a few hits and not be interrupted while you're trying to finish that big blast also, as the warrior build that we're going with, you're going to be initiating most of the fights. So you're definitely going to be taking some hits and, and heavy armor is just going to help with that in general. See, the weapon of choice here is going to be the Star Scourge Greatsword. That's giving you that nice gravity warrior feel. Now, I did start this build with a colossal sword and a shield on the offhand, but I don't know. I never feel great using the shields. I usually am more aggressive and kind of try to beat the enemies to the punch. And on top of that, you're going to have to put a lot of points into endurance to carry a huge weapon and a brolic shield um, and that's just so many points that can go elsewhere but that is totally your call but like I said I did end up starting this class that way it just ended up working well once I got those weapons from Radon himself and for me personally just putting all those extra points in endurance just felt like a bit of a waste just in case you do want to look for some other weapons that fit this build really nice to go along with the gravity magic I would definitely suggest using the falling star beast jaw um, that's a little bit more end game but it'll still give you that added spell of gravity since there really aren't too much to work with and due to the 34 strength and 20 intellect requirement it fits the build very well and you don't have to make any adjustments to your points at all to fit this build the staff i used when i first started off as a meteor staff as it increased the gravity magic but as you level through the game, since that one can't be upgraded, it'll eventually kind of fall behind. But I didn't mid-max that too much. Right now, I'm just using the Academy Glintstone Staff, and that works for me just fine. So choose whatever works for you. Talking about some of the other spells that I attached to this build that goes really well. First off is going to be the Great Blade Phalanx. This is fantastic just for defensive purposes. It provides a quick way to just increase that poise damage to get their stance broken. And that's what we're focusing on a lot in this build. Using this spell and Rock Sling alone makes their stance break so frequently it's crazy we're also going to use gravity well as our glintstone pebble in this build just to finish enemies off it has a lower fp cost than the other spells sitting at 12 versus 18 no not a huge difference but it's definitely something you'll notice since we don't have the biggest mana pool here so it kind of just fits well when you're trying to finish somebody off the other two main spells that we use are going to be collapsing stars which is great damage and it complements the build really well bring them more into melee range so you can get back to that hack and slash play style that i'm kind of going for and of course we have meteor or meteorite for the aoe blast i find i don't use this too much 
since our weapon does fantastic AoE and costs less FP to use overall, but it's just nice to have there as just another gravity spell that is available. And last but not least, we have Loretta's Great Bow, just so we could snipe out enemies that we need. Eh, why not? It's there. We got a free slot, right? But that's about it for the spells. For our Wondrous Physic, I use the Stone Barb Crack tier, which increases the chance to break enemies' stance, and that is kind of, again, leaning into stance breaking and getting their poise to be broken as quickly as possible. All of these things are kind of just stacking on top of each other to make this build just a machine trying to break enemy stances. We also use the Spotted Crack tier to enhance any of the charge attacks. Again, I chose to go full force into that hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that leads us to our Talismans. So for our Talismans, I use the Axe Talisman for the enhanced charge attacks, and that synergizes really nicely with the Wondrous Physic as we again try to break the enemy stances as fast as we can. You feel the repetition here, boys? I would also recommend the Claw Talisman just to enhance any jump attacks. I find that works really well because with these weapons, they are a bit short, and jumping attacks come out a lot quicker, feel much better to use sometimes in the charge attacks, but that's totally up to you. That's just my personal preference. For the next Talisman, I like to use the Kyrian Philip greed crest if that's how you say it lowering the fp consumption by our skills um like i said we don't have the biggest mana pool so being able to conserve where we can definitely helps out but if you want to even go more full force into the hand-to-hand -hand combat feel free to swap that out for either the claw talisman or just another melee talisman in general next up i use the earth tree's favor um, that's raising our maximum HP, which is nothing but good stuff considering I'm sitting around 48 Vigor. Um, so that's a huge benefit. We are always initiating combat. We're always the first to strike and we're definitely gonna be in the heat of things. I'm um, increasing our stamina, always good. Never a downside to that. And then of course the equip load, if you choose to put a little bit more into endurance, you could pull back on that. But the other two stats that it's increasing is still helping us further. So I chose to lower my endurance a bit and just put on the Earth Tree's favor. This way I benefit fit from all three of those stat increases. Last but not least, I chose the Stargazer Heirloom, just raising that intelligence, giving us that little extra bump of damage. So when we decide to use our spells, we're just able to just pack that little bit extra of a punch from each one. Next, we could talk about the character stats and how I kind of set the mold for this build. So I have 48 Vigor. Um, that works out for me really well. I would definitely look to bump that up to 50, but since we're wearing the heavy armor, I feel like that's just enough to kind of keep you out of one shot range, which in my mind works for me. But around 45 to 50 is definitely a good sweet spot. Mind right now is sitting at 19. I would like to get that up to 20, but again, I'm trying to keep it more towards that warrior play style. So that's kind of a way where it's forcing me to stay on that side of things because I only have a handful of spells I can cast before I'm kind of forced to go in back in melee range but that's what i wanted to do with this character anyways so 1920 is perfect for me of course if you're looking for like the opposite build of what i did here focusing more into the magic you already know pump that up a little bit more i'd probably go around 25 but there's really not a lot of gravity spells anyways so i don't see why you'd go further than that our endurance is going to be sitting at 35 i feel like that's a nice medium that allows you to wear heavy armor without dumping too many points into it i definitely wouldn't go any lower than this as you're going to have a hard time wearing the armor set that we're trying to wear here and that talisman slot for the earth trees favor is still not going to put you at medium load so definitely stick to around 35 if not pump a little bit more into that and this goes hand in hand with what i was talking about before with that shield on the offhand you just have to put so many points into endurance if you're going to go that route i would definitely advise a step away from that and you'll be able to utilize those points somewhere else where it makes you way more powerful in other aspects of the game and a positive if you do go a little bit more than that and not wear a shield so if you go with like 40 45 then you can get rid of the earth tree's favor and stick another you know that's another free talisman slot that you have there strength i have at 40 points because we wanted to focus more on the weapon damage itself and that's definitely where i would focus more moving into new game plus if i was to stay the course of this warrior play style dexterity we don't need um this base character is a samurai so it came with the 15 and you do need 15 to rock the weapon so 15 and intelligence i'm sitting at 44 actually i'm sitting at 39 but because of the talisman that we put on uh, that's increasing us to 44 just to get that little extra bump in those gravity spells when you do want to use them faith nothing arcane nothing you don't really need much of that for this build some final thoughts before i wrap it up definitely lean on that weapon art star caller's cry this is an extremely powerful ash of war and will definitely get you through most situations like i said it was literally just buffed so that it comes out quicker uh, if you happen to find yourself in a bit of a predicament this is definitely what you got to fall back on it 
it'll get you out of majority of your bad situations. I feel like most classes in this game will be better off with one specific focus point, but this is a viable all around build. Melee, spells, it covers all the bases. Definitely try some of the other weapons I use, swap around the armor a little bit. Definitely let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Hit the like button for me, that'd be awesome. And I will see you in the next one. Get the hell out of here.